Hi everybody, I'm back and I made the stone throne. In this video I'll show you how I made and installed the stone throne and also the field stone wall that surrounds it. So this video starts out just about the same way as the stone tub video did six months ago. I was out on my tractor digging for a pool project and came across a massive rock. I estimate the boulder to weigh around 4,000 pounds which is within the capacity on the rear boom so handling it was pretty easy. I set the stone aside and the next day had a cup of coffee and walked on it, looked around it from many different angles to get an idea of what I would use it for. Within about five minutes I had a real strong vision of using this as some type of Victorian high back chair. The real pronounced point at the top just really put that in my brain early on. So the first step was to get the stone very level and sitting in the position that I wanted it to be. I wouldn't be giving you an accurate depiction of this project if I didn't show some heavy equipment repairs. These things are always breaking and it's about a one to one ratio of downtime to working time it seems. It's sort of an art form to keep up on the regular maintenance with these machines and also ignore problems that are not life threatening or risking further damage to the machine as long as you can get away with it. So once I had it all marked up, it was time to start cutting. Um, this time I used a 16 inch saw. If you watch the stone tub video, you'll see that I was using a 14 inch saw and this new Hilti unit has been incredible. A lot faster, a lot more power. Um, I also wanted to share a little more of this entire process. I thought it was important to show just kind of how much time goes into this. Of course, it's gonna be sped up, but this gives you a more accurate picture of just how much time goes into something uh, like a large scale stone sculpting project. So you'll see that I'm using the two stroke gas saw and what I'm running on there is a segmented diamond blade that essentially rubs the rock at a really high rate of speed. It uses water to cool and also remove the slurry that it's creating. So as you're going it's just constantly cleaning out the pocket and cooling the blade and once you reach the depth that it can um, get into the stone then you're pulling it off and you're chiseling it away um, for the chisels i'm using some trowel and holden chisels some carbide chisels and uh, some stone buster hammers and uh, it's just a slow process but you know it's a great workout the deeper that you get into the stone the smaller you have to make the cuts and the more challenging it is to get the radius of the blade into the area you're trying to remove so it gets a little tricky holding it sideways helped and switching different blade sizes was helpful as well. I put in a section here just in real time showing how slow these cuts are. Um, it is pretty amazing to remove stone relatively this fast, but it takes a long time still. It's a lot of work. <laughs> Over the course of the five weeks of cutting and grinding on the stone tub where we took out about 10,000 pounds of material, we learned some better techniques, uh, picked up some better tools, so it was nice to apply those to another large scale project on this one. I'm pulling some measurements here just to be sure that I'm not going too deep. You always want to leave a couple inches of material so that you have some structural integrity to the shell of the stone. And the further your cut goes in, the more that you have to grind. So even one errant cut uh, that's deeper than the other cuts in the stone is going to cause you to do a lot more grinding uh, at the end. So you're always trying to be mindful and keep your cuts matched to the same depth and that makes grinding much easier and faster. These angles get pretty hard to swing a hammer inside of so it got a little slower in these points. Um, I switched to the 14 inch saw that I did the stone tub with and that finished it out. So after many test sits I determined that it was at the right size um, about the maximum that I could go uh, without having concerns for the structural integrity of the back. So uh, it was time to start grinding. This time I used much more aggressive diamond cup wheels that were much faster at removing the larger chunks of granite and also leaving a better finish to prepare for polish. I'm generally doing these projects in afternoon chunks so it's hard to determine exactly how long they take. I would estimate about two full days of cutting and chiseling, a solid day of grinding, and another solid day of polish. One of the reasons I like working with pieces with intrusions is these bands that you end up with. Look at how that comes out inside. It's like a halo. I love that piece. Um, that was really neat to kind of have exposed once it was being ground. You didn't see it when you were cutting it even, 
uh, but a beautiful detail that popped up. There's one down here on the bottom seat as well, you'll see, that just is so special and unique, and I, I really um, am fond of these intruded pieces for that reason. All right, and here's the most satisfying part of the process again, the power wash. Look at this piece. Look how that stripe just kind of comes across and then goes inside and does its wild little shape. I absolutely love those. Um, look at this piece, just spectacular. The front, the side, the back, everything has a really unique feature to offer. And uh, it, just, it just really shined up nicely. I was so happy with this. So this is my buddy, Rody, and this is the area where we're going to be putting the stone throne. He likes to hang out with me on projects, and uh, he's good company. In the midst of the stone throne, I was uh, excavating a long utility line for my future pool project. This generated tons and tons of rocks, and you'll see what I did with these in just a minute. The rocks are just so plentiful here that, you know, you're breaking off your blade like you saw there. I'm always repairing something on the machine, but, uh, you know, you patch it up and you keep going. I couldn't even give you an estimate for the weight of rocks that we moved from this trench, but it was about two rocks to one dirt. It's incredible how many uh, rocks are on this property. So I've been building field stone walls from projects like this for a few years now, and I have hundreds of yards of these walls. Uh, it's a really organic, natural look, and I think it blends into the desert environment just beautifully. I've never had anyone touch a single stone on my property. All of these are moved, hauled, loaded, stacked, rearranged, all by me, and it's my absolute passion. I love doing this, and I kind of get a chuckle out of people who think the anything other than that. Okay, so build stone walls are done, stone thrown, polished, it's time to move it. So, got come along, keeping this tight, up to the back bucket. We have a counterweight to hopefully be able to lift and not do a wheelie once we get going. So, we'll find out. Making a long story short, I had to build the field stone walls prior to installing the stone throne. This made it a lot more challenging, but I was able to keep all the projects going this way. Uh, you'll see here what I'm about to get into to try and get past the field stone steps and uh, get into that, you know, past that staircase. And it was a little tricky. My brother was kind enough to come and help me film this with the uh, drone again. He's a professional photographer, and I'm always grateful for his time when he helps me with these projects. Uh, it's always beautiful from the air. You get an idea of the scope, and you can kind of see, especially on this one, just how nice these stone walls came out. They look the best from above. I really love the way they kind of sweep, and you don't see it as much when you're standing at the ground level, but up in the air, they just look really cool. Um, Here's where we start trying to get as close as we can to this staircase to elevate the rear and then get this boom in position to extend the stone out as far as it can reach knowing I'm close to the maximum capacity uh, before taking it off of the straps. So the machine is rated for about 5,500 pounds. Uh, the rock I would estimate it right around 4,000 and once you start getting things extended out you start reaching those maximums at different points of leverage so just went as slow as I could and careful as I could and thank God those chains held so this was just a challenging way to do this um, again would have been ideal before the field stone walls were in place and uh, I was just grateful that that turnbuckle was able to apply enough tension to that chain and that transport chain is rated for about 8,000 pounds so it held true to its rating and we just inched it up on here little bit by little bit and uh, about this point here is where the controls just stopped working because it was just past the weight capacity. So I was able to get the straps rearranged, get it off the chain, and start using the extendo hoe to push it back. And here's the kind of sketchy uh, portion where we use little shims in there, use those 4x4, 6x6 posts to hold it propped up in place in order to rearrange this strap going around the back and just little bit by little bit, you know, it's kind of a, a game of inches here. Uh, I would file this one under, should have used a crane. We ran out of drone battery, but we got it. What we ended up doing, it was coming down forward like this where you haven't used the sticks, very sketchy. So we ended up putting the bucket up against here, chaining around, 
to the ears on the bucket. And then we pushed the whole thing up about a foot here. It was right there. We got this up a foot, which is awesome because it stands much taller, more pronounced. And we got it over to the side a little bit to center on these stairs here. And nice and centered, facing the correct way, leveled. Very happy. Probably put some right, stones in here. Well, when I'm putting the finishing touches on a project, it usually involves more rocks. So, wanted to build up a base here to put those rocks on to make a nice little flat path to connect the stone throne to the stairs. I really enjoy the simplicity and the natural look of these pathways. I've done a few hundred feet of these now and just really enjoy these. They're, they're very satisfying projects to do. I uh, probably spent about you know, six hours on this one just to get everything nice and level and arranged in a pattern that was pretty close without many joints. I'm a bit of a purist and even though I have carbide rock tools that I can easily use to split these stones, I really like to leave them intact and I appreciate their irregularities their imperfections and I think it all adds to the total package. To finish off the stone wall I integrated some LED string lights and also some spotlights that could focus on the stone throne and some other key features I wanted to highlight. Okay you know what time it is. Time for gratuitous drone shots. Uh, so happy to show this thing off. It came out fantastic. I love the location that I ultimately chose putting it in the desert. I uh, thought it was just the perfect spot for it. Kind of showcasing this piece that would have been hidden underground and perhaps never emerged. So it's just so nice to celebrate something natural that is now functional and provides a nice little spot to sit, have a cup of coffee, watch the sunrise. Beautiful place to be. All in all this was another challenging but very rewarding project. I'm so happy that I chose this spot for it. It's a wonderful place to sit. It's added this tremendous energy to that area of the yard and I really enjoy being there. I wanted to take a little time and just thank everyone for such strong support and positive reaction to the stone tub video. Uh, so many of those comments I could tell people were just really inspired and that was really my goal. So happy to share these projects with you guys. Thank you for your patience. It took me six months to make this one. I promise you there will be more. They may take some time, but they will be good. And that's important for me. Another reason it's taken me so long to make a video is that I've been building a stone studio and making some small art objects. And I really look forward to sharing those soon. So keep an eye on my website, jameslosslin.com. Appreciate everyone's patience and support. And you guys have been so awesome. And I look forward to connecting more in the future. And uh, until then, subscribe and stay tuned. Thanks, guys.